I just want to briefly talk about the connectors that you find in the library, as well as how to create your own connectors. One thing we've already talked about, and I'm going to bring it to the side here just to show you, is that the rotating or any of the connector pieces, they are going to be scaled and you cannot change that scale. So once you bring in the ball and the place where it goes, either the lock ball, the rotating ball, or the socket, um, remember that you can't change the size of that. If you look at it, let's go in a little bit, it'll fit perfectly, right? It'll fit both of these perfectly. So if you turn it, it'll fit in there perfectly and then it'll move. However, you cannot make it smaller. You can't make it bigger. So the snowman here is gonna show you how to use that. I made it on the rotating ball. So when printed, Mr. Snowman, who is attached to the ball, will rotate around, okay? So what's gonna happen, I'm gonna bring him up just so you see. I have him disconnected here just so you can see there. Um, so he's going to print on top of this, so they'll be fused and grouped. And then this will be in here so that it can rotate around inside of that, and that should hold it up, okay? Now, the other thing I wanted to show you, down here, okay, is how I did the arms. So these arms will move because I've got two pieces. I've got this joint piece, which is the angled ball, and that goes right in there. And then I put this piece, which is the socket. I think I used the support socket, I think. And then the ball fits right in there, then you can bring whatever piece. And in this case, I brought the arm and I'm gonna connect it there, group it with the hand, of course. And if I really wanted to go crazy, I could also, of course, put the hand. Now, the one thing that concerns me about this is that you're not really learning how to make the connector work. You can kind of see how putting it the ball into the socket will make it work. But I also wanted to show you how to create your own connectors to make things move. So on this one, on my letters, I'm just going to show you while they are a hole, what I did here. So if we look, let me get in there a little bit. There we go. So if you look inside, what I did was I created this little barbelly thing and I am separating it just so you can see it. You see it's in blue, and I'm gonna bring it up just to show you. I made this barbell, and then inside of here, I made the holes that are just a wee bit bigger, and then what's gonna happen is that it's going to print the holes, then it's gonna print this in it. It'll print a tiny, tiny support to hold it, and then once it prints out, we can break the support. There is the option of making one and then printing them separately and putting it through the hole. But at the size that I made it, uh, it's probably gonna break. The one thing I would suggest if you're gonna do this, uh, when I printed it, I feel like this middle part was too thin. So I would probably, if I had done it again, bulk it up a bit. Okay, another way that you can use the connectors is something like this. Um, these actually came out really nice. These are, I called them letter spinners. I don't know if they have a better name, but what I did was I put the spinning hub on it and then with this, the ball joint right there connected to the one next to it. And you can move these around and kind of treat them like beads. If you turn them, each side has a different letter. And then what I did was, and I will show you the print out of this because they came out really nice actually. I put one star on each of them on each, on a side of each one. That way um, you can put in like a mystery letter or a wild letter. So if you wanna create words, and I thought this would be fun thing for people to play with and make words. So if you want to do something like that, this is another reason you could use a connector. This is a pretty standard connector. Okay, the last one I wanted to show you 
was a very easy to use connector. And this one is in Everyday Objects of the Shape Library. So you go to Shape Library, the beta, and then you go to down, it's way at the bottom. It'll probably start you on Creatures and Characters. So you go all the way down to Everyday Objects. And on page one, the swivel connector ring and square connect. And also you can, the hinged heart also will work. Um, it's all the ones in number one. I'm sorry. Make sure I told you the right one. Yeah, it's near the bottom. And the chain link you can use if you want to make it longer, but I didn't use it. So what I did was I made my shape, put my connector on. And on this one, I would suggest actually printing the whole thing together. So what you're going to do is attach this to it. And it's already set up that when it prints, it'll spin. And I'll show you how this came out. This one was a little bit different because I had to use the um, socket as well. Let me put this up. So for this one, I added the socket, but it also will spin. So if you see, that's a spinning hub right there. And then the last one, pretty much the same. I just kind of played around with the colors, but of course, remember that the colors will not change. So these here you can use, and they also are going to be, um, it says it's compatible. However, it is not um, going to be completely kept to scale. So you do have to be careful of that. So if I use this one and I use this piece, you see how this doesn't move? This one here, you can change the scale. So be very aware of that and make sure that if you are gonna use these pieces that you keep it to scale because if I put it in there, it's perfect. However, if I change the scale even just a little bit, that's not gonna fit. It'll be too small, it'll slip right out. So make sure that you uh, remember everything you know about being aligned perfectly once the pieces are aligned, you can also check for the size. So really quickly, I will just remind you how to do that. So remember, you want to line it up. And there you go. So this is your basic introduction to connectors.